Hello again and welcome to the last of our sessions that's devoted solely to forms. In this section we're going to look at adding individual fields to existing forms and of course that's one way of building a form up from scratch. Start with a blank form and add the fields one by one. But we're going to use the form that we created in the last section and add individual fields to parts of that to begin with. And first of all we're going to work on the subform. So we'll open it in design view. And here we can see the form header that we reduced which had the uh, labels on it, due date, description, task title and then the three fields in sequence, task title, description and due date. So we're going to add a fourth field to this subform and we're going to put the priority field on there. So let's see how we do that. One of the things to bear in mind when you're working with access forms is that although you can arrange the forms visually quite effectively a lot of the time, there are occasions when actual dimensions are quite important. And this is one of those occasions because we've established that the current width for the task subform, which is actually 19 centimeters, I can see it on the very helpful ruler there, is about the right width. I don't want to make my subform any wider than that, or it will overflow the side of the form and I'll finish up with scroll bars and so on. So I want to keep this at 19 centimeters at most. Now, in order to add the priority field, I'm going to use one of the buttons on the design tab and that's the add existing fields button. And what this does is to bring up a list of the available fields in all of the tables in the database, um, not just the task table. The tasks table is separated here because Access knows that this form is basically displaying information from the tasks table. So it's primarily letting me choose the fields from here and in fact there's priority that's the one I'm going to use. I could use a field from one of the other tables such as student or even courses and invoice they're there available to me. The field list pane is extremely useful. We can drag the field we want. Let's say we're going to put it in there for the moment and then we can either minimize it or just close it to get it out of the way. And one of the things you can immediately see is that, of course, my 19 centimeters has been broken. So I'm going to have to split this space up rather cleverly. And in addition to that, I need to bear in mind a sensible order for these fields on this row. It currently is title, priority, description, and due date. Well, maybe that's not so bad. Maybe we'll go with that one. So now let's get that width right again. We can certainly save some space on the title. So I'm going to drag that across to there, say. And in fact, uh, more by luck than judgment, I must admit, um, I've just about done that right because I'm back to 19. However, when Access pushed out the width of these fields because of the new field, it also pushed out the width of the sort of page or paper that sits behind them to make that wider and I would still finish up with the scroll bar so I'm now going to drag that back to 19 again so that I don't get the undesired effect in my subform. That's it. And there we are, my new field is in place. However, there are a couple of things to be aware of that might well need fixing and one of them is the alignment on that label and we're going to look at that next. With any object on a form it has a property sheet and we've looked at the property sheet for a whole form before but if we select an individual object such as this label right click and go right to the bottom and click on properties we can see that we have a whole list of properties for that individual field. Now let me just move that properties pane out of the way. The problem we have here is that due date is aligned right and in fact if you look down the properties sheet you can see text align 
right. I don't want text align right, I want text align left. When I've made the change, I just close the property sheet and the job's done. All of the properties for all of these objects are accessible via the property sheet. And we don't have time in this course to go through all of those properties. As you can see, there are an awful lot of them. We will be talking about several of them as we go through. And there are particularly important ones. But basically, the bulk of them are ones that are related to formatting. Many of them will speak for themselves, like, for instance, border color, border width, and so on. Some of them take a little bit more explanation, and we will be trying to look at as many of those as possible. But let's look at one or two very important ones. If I click in this field here, Description, and click on the Data tab, I will find that the control source, which is basically the data source for this, is the Description field and we know that the description field is actually in the tasks table. This sort of control is called a bound control because this control is related to one of the fields in one of the tables in our database. So it's a bound control. The text format is rich text. It's an enabled field which means that I can actually get to it and change it if I want to. So we'll be talking about more of those properties as we go along, but for now we've realigned the text there and we've only got one more thing to do before we're happy with this. The one other thing that we need to check on this form before we close it is to check the tab order. Now when we're using a form, uh, let me take this particular one and open it in form view. If I press the tab key, it goes left to right, top to bottom. And generally speaking, that's the default tab order in Access 2010, left to right, top to bottom. But there are occasions when we want to arrange it differently, and there are occasions when the tab order gets upset and we need to put it right again. And there is a specific control to do this. When we're in Design View, on the design tab there is a tab order button and if we click on the tab order button it shows us the tab order for each control in each section of our form now in the form header there are no controls where we can enter data there are only labels similarly the form footer is actually empty but the details section of the report this middle section has got four fields in it and this is the tab order it is correct, uh, Access 2010 generally will keep that in the right order. If I wanted to change it, supposing I wanted to tab to description before priority for example, I can literally move things around by clicking on them and dragging. It's as easy as that. There is also a facility at the bottom here to auto order the controls on a section of a form and auto order does left to right, top to bottom. In this case, there's no need to change because everything's fine. So I'll just cancel this dialog. So we've seen how to add a field to a form, in our case the task subform. Um, but there is another way of adding fields to forms. And if I put the main student one form into design view again, on the design tab there is a group called controls and from this group <clears throat> we can add any of the sorts of control that we've seen so things like um, a tab, a button, a label and so on and in fact there's a range of different controls that we can put in there's a combo box, a page break and so on now what we're going to do on this is we're really going to just add a label and the label control is that one. Click on that and then draw on the form where we want the label to appear by dragging with the mouse and I'm just going to type in the word tasks. That's it. Back into form view to have a look at our form 
And there we are, we've now got a little heading there that says Tasks. Now that Tasks is a little bit indistinct, it's pretty much just the same as all of the other labels there. If I want to make it a little bit more prominent, I go back into Design View and on the Format tab there are all of the usual formatting functions. If I select this text for the word Tasks, I can do all the things I'd normally do. So I can change the font, I can increase the size, say to 16 points, I can make it bold, and another thing I could do, which may be particularly appropriate in this case, I could make it the full width of the page, just about, and change it to center alignment. So let's have another look at the form with that. There we are. And so you can see how using standard formatting controls we can again improve the look and feel of our forms. I'm now going to add another field to the main student tasks form and I'm going to add the field for theory confirmed. Now we saw how to do that earlier on using the add existing fields option but I'm just going to show you a way of doing it which has been in access for a very long time and which you may sometimes find useful and that is that you can actually choose one of the controls in this group here let's say we go for the checkbox control I've made a little bit of space on the form for it put the checkbox in there there say and I've now created a checkbox which I can use however it's not bound it's not actually connected in any way to the theory confirmed field in the student table to bind it I select and right click click on properties and if you look on the data tab you'll see that the control source is blank. That means that this checkbox, although it will check and uncheck perfectly satisfactorily, isn't actually storing anything or retrieving anything from our database. So I'm going to bind it to the Theory Confirmed field. So use this drop down. There's Theory Confirmed. Close. And there we are. Now if I go into Form View I, my label is completely wrong of course, I'm going to want to put in there theory confirmed. But if I now step through my students, I can see that Sam doesn't have theory confirmed, Bernard does, and Jane does. And clearly if I wanted to say uncheck Jane's and check Sam's I could. Now most people would prefer to use the existing fields list approach to adding a field to a form but that does just show you can add a control and then bind it to a field in the database later if you want to. So finally in this section we're going to look at a couple of other form facilities that will be useful to us later on. Let's take the student form into design view again. One of the issues that constantly arises is actually keeping our forms looking neat, tidy and professional. And there are occasions when we're going to need to align things. If you say select a field like that one, right click and open properties, on the format tab you can get an idea of width, height, top on the, relative to the rest of the section left and so on and you can position and size things extremely accurately using these properties but it can take a long time with a big form with a lot of fields on it and sometimes you just want something that looks neat there's a very good option in access and if you select the first field there hold the shift key down and then select all of the other fields in that row. Those controls basically you would want them all aligned along the top to form a nice neat line and if you click on the Arrange tab there's an Align button and the drop down on the Align button says do you want them aligned to the grid, left, right, top or bottom. Well let's go for top 
there's a minimal amount of movement but they're all aligned to the top and if you had say within the sub form here same sort of thing select those four and again align top just make sure they're all perfectly aligned along the top and if you selected the individual fields now look to the properties you check that their vertical positions were exactly the same you can do the same with aligning things on the left the right and the bottom and so on so that's another good tool to use to tidy up your forms finally one or two other very quick things that we can put onto a form we can insert the date and time we're going to see how to do that when we move on to reports later you can put in a fancier title you can even insert a company logo there are a few other things with forms and we'll be coming up with those later on in the course but for now that's it